headed up to Pikes Peak on this windy road. It's pretty exciting, even though we're only going 10 miles an hour. So we're on Pikes Peak, 14,000 feet. I feel lightheaded and tingly. The ride up here was really harrowing. There were lots of hairpin turns. You just feel like you're on the edge of the world looking over. The scenery is breathtaking. I mean that more than one way. The oxygen is pretty thin, so it's difficult to get your breath if you move around much. Up here at the very top, what I've been thinking about is the first guys to come up. Zebulon Montgomery Pike actually was the one who discovered the peak, but he never made it up. His expedition wasn't really prepared to do snow and snowy mountain weather. In his journal, he wrote that the snow was waist deep and they just had summer gear, so they didn't try to winter the storm or come up the peak. It was actually a guy named Edwin James years later. He was the first to get to the top, but it still bears Pike's name. And so the reason why we came up here is to talk about motivation. You can imagine the kind of motivation that it took for those first guys to walk up a mountain like this. In the book, we talk about motivation. We talk about motivations that are here and now in this life. But those motivations fall short sometimes, don't they? So one of the great motivations that we have when we consider running our entire life, how do you stay motivated for all that time? And the answer, I'm convinced, is eternal rewards. The Christian life is like a long-term trek up a snowy mountain. It's difficult, it's hard, but that day when you get to the top, you know it's worth it. I think that's a great motto for the entire book, that it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth the trouble, the pain, and the suffering that you go through to get to the top of that mountain. Read on in the book and I think you'll begin to understand more about that motivation that's available to you in the Christian life. Mm -hmm.